wonderful, wonderful. Hey, come over this way, we can we can sure. <laughs> Nothing mattered. I'm tearing again out to sea. And they're still coming in. I'm just turning around to look out to sea and I can see a way out to the very horizon. They're coming in in flood after flood. up next is the integration of a recon squad element followed by armor doing one of the hardest missions anybody could do in the army and that is recon an open field adjacent to a village a farm a village area a farm a farmland and go in and look for enemy positions without much cover okay so coming up is the tactical demonstration. Hope you enjoy and thanks again for being here this afternoon and supporting us. Squad. 
support. Oh, the Sherman took a hit. I said Sherman in the heat of battle. That's a Stewart that took a hit. The M8 also coming up to provide support now that the Stewart is out of action.
Clark continues to provide withering fire. There's a flanking maneuver going on, trying to take the bunker from off to the side. And I would say it sounds to me like there's been a diminution of firepower as they're busy taking on the individual enemy soldiers in that bunker. Seems to be a call for ceasefire as they're checking to see about possible survivors in that assault on the enemy position. Whether or not there might be any prisoners, they can begin to interrogate. still see hints of smoke coming out of the steward that took a hit. Smoke coming out of the upper turret. The M20 advancing cautiously with its 50 cal. The sergeant there instructing his men to protect the rear in the event somebody's creeping up behind them while they're busy concentrating on the bunker. Clearing it out, checking for snipers. And it seems that they have a POW. They've definitely got a prisoner. His, his hands are on top of his head. He'll be checking his identity papers, trying to determine his rank. What does he know? Where perhaps other enemy forces are deployed. Of course, the medics are attending to our own wounded. This was a scene that was repeated multiple times across Europe, as slowly but surely an Allied advance would ultimately bring them to Berlin. It is important to understand why this exercise is conducted. It's not to glorify, it's not to celebrate. It's an attempt to bring American history back home. It's an attempt to deal with the current problem we're facing of history illiteracy in America, failing to appreciate and understand that which came before us, our American heritage, and frankly, one that is represented in each family here today. We are attempting to tell the story. We're attempting to get people to ask questions about their own family history and learn more. That ultimately is the mission of the Museum of American Armor, to honor those who have defended freedom and to ensure that we do not forget the past. Well, you've got a German POW marching his way into captivity have the conclusion of a tactical exercise. A round of applause, please, for those people who have presented. Everybody in the field is a volunteer who puts in an enormous amount of time and personal expense to get it right, and we are deeply appreciative. That, plus the people who have restored the various armor equipment that you see here, it is incredible that they're able to bring these vehicles back to life, find the parts, put in the time, because they are very committed to ensuring that this story continues. We view ourselves as custodians of this, these former assets. Custodians of our history. We will ask you to stay behind the ropes while we clear the field, and then once all the equipment is back where it's supposed to be. We'll drop the ropes and you can get up close in person.
Wildcat is from the U.S. Military Museum in Danbury, Connecticut on long-term loan to the Museum of American Armor, which restored it to its operational status. Glad it's here. to health. Now coming back. Took a hit to the team. That Quad 50 was originally designed to knock out enemy aircraft seeking to attack American columns. But its concentrated firepower was so lethal it was also used to devastating effect on ground targets and snipers. One can just imagine they cut down entire trees with the Quad 50 if they thought a sniper was hiding somewhere in the tree top. And here comes the steward tank, which, despite its size and its small weaponry, still served an important role during World War II. Yet as soon as all the vehicles are back in place, we'll drop the ropes. You get to look at all the exhibits, get up close, with the equipment, and we welcome your attendance here this Sunday afternoon at World War II Encampment Weekend, made possible by PSG Long Island, Bethpage Federal Credit Union, Amtrust Title, Bristol Assisted Living, Squad Security, and Man Products, the folks who build the steel sheets. Okay, we're doing a survey, which we did this morning, and we're sort of, this is the world's largest focus group. How many folks heard about us through the Newsday ad? Show of hands, Newsday ad. Okay. How many folks saw us on Bios TV? How many of us saw us on News 12? Colleagues, please drop the ropes. Let, let these folks get up close and personal with World War II history. Thank you again. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I,